This has been a long time coming. I've been working on this thing for a while now. And after all these years, I don't even remember the last time I, I was talking about this. I think I got this laptop around 2017. And in the video that I made, I was talking about how I was trying to get a replacement screen. There's the original screen right there. I finally got the replacement screen and take a look at this. Oh, it's beautiful, right? Look at that. It's a Libra booted T60. Oh, it's so pretty. I shouldn't touch the screen, but it's mass, so you're not even really gonna be able to tell. This took a while to do because the T60 is very peculiar about which screen it's able to take, specifically the 16 inch version, which is this one right here. This is the um, 1600 by 1200 display, so it's very, very nice. The reason why Libre Boot wouldn't work with this display, the stock display, is because it's only able to take the IPS displays. Let's take a look at what I'm running on it right now. See, I'm running Dev1. I'm gonna pause the video for it to load up real quick. Signing in right now. So here we are. I'm using LXQT because it's very low on RAM usage. I'll actually pull it up real quick. I like to use Emacs. I discovered Emacs and how to use it properly not too long ago and I fell in love with it. So if we do free, very, very little RAM usage. When I used Mate, which I, I love using Mate, but it's not very good for this computer, using somewhere around 400 idle. A Libre Buddha T60 is a very wonderful machine, but it has a couple, couple flaws built into it. Uh, I'll try and see if I can hold it close, you can hear it. I'm not sure if you're able to hear the really high-pitched whine that it does, but this is a common problem with a lot of Libre laptops, this high-pitched coil whine that comes from the fan here. I'm not really sure why it does it, and when you turn off the computer, it still, it still makes that whine, and that's because the battery is plugged in. If you pull out the battery and plug it back in, it stops it altogether, but when the computer's running, it can get a little annoying. So if you do power top, you just have to go into the tunables tabs. Just set everything to good. That's one of the little niggles about this computer. You do have quite a few quirks. With a T60, another quirk that you're experiencing is that even though the system supports four gigabytes of RAM, it's only able to read about three. You notice that it only has a total of 3.1 gigabytes available, even though there's four gigabytes of RAM installed on the system right now. That is a chipset limitation, and that wasn't fixed until the T61. Let's do NeoFetch real quick so we can take a quick look at, quick overview. Oh, it's beautiful. One of the problems with uh, Dev1 is that it uses a lot of outdated software because it's, it's based on Debian, so it has a lot available, but it changes the init software from system D to sysv in it, or OpenRC, depending on which one you picked. I picked uh, OpenRC. Another thing is that it uses a very outdated kernel. Debian in general doesn't use the most up-to-date software, but I like to have updated software. So you can see right here, I'm actually using a very, very recent kernel. The way that I did that was I went on to the Linux Libre website and downloaded and followed their instructions. So now I'm actually running the Linux Libre kernel right here. And it runs pretty well. I know there's been some issues with the 5.0 and up kernels with performance on Intel processors, but I, I've been able to run this pretty well. You see the screen is running at 1600 by 1200. So this is, this is the really nice high-end screen and it looks beautiful. There's a little bit of yellow glare. It's not like a modern IPS, which has really good viewing angles. The colors do shift a little bit and there is a slight yellowish tint. Sorry, there is a slight yellowish tint to the screen. I think part of that can be fixed by dying, doing an LED mod because this does use CCFL. There were some issues I was having when I was installing Libre Boot for the first time. Every time I tried to do flash ROM, it was giving me an error that I couldn't write to flash. And that's because of 
software preventing it from being done. So what I figured out is we have to go on to, let me exit this real quick. So it's an Etcetera default grub. What you have to do, there's this line here, and you have to set this, either this line or this line, equal to IO mem equals relaxed. And when you do this, this is gonna make it so that you would actually be able to flash the ROM onto the memory chip that's on here for the BIOS. And if you don't do this, then you're gonna get an error with a T60. I actually tried out a lot of different operating systems on this computer before I settled on Dev1. I wanted to pick something that didn't use System D. And there's nothing wrong with System D, but it's my personal preference to use something that's not. The first one that I tried out was Parabola Linux. I, I really like Parabola. There were some issues I had with it. The installation process is not intuitive at all. Like it's, it's really, really shitty. And I might do its own video, just how to install Parabola Linux for people like myself that aren't the most experienced Linux users, but are interested in trying out something more free. Other things that I tried out, I tried out Jagora. I tried out Triscoll. Triscoll was pretty cool. It worked for a little bit. It was running Mate. I couldn't get the net install working for some reason. So that was a little bit of a shame. Also, the graphics fucked up and that kind of ruined the installation. I'm not sure what happened there. I also tried uh, Vanilla Debian and Vanilla Arch. I tried Artix Linux. I also installed Geeks on here for a little bit. Geeks is pretty cool. I love Geeks. I use it on my desktop. In the end, I settled for Dev1. I managed to get to work. It wasn't working at first. I had to do the live install instead of the net install and that that worked much better. But for the whole, the whole gist of it, the whole thing, it's really, really pleasant. I'm gonna show you boot up time. When this had the original BIOS on it, it would take about a minute to boot up. But now with Libre Boot, it's much, much faster. So I'm actually gonna do complete shutdown. So if we do cold start, we're gonna see how quickly it turns out, right? Just gonna show real quick. I'm gonna press enter as soon as it comes up. For some reason, it doesn't default to, like the, the selection starts on advanced options rather than just the kernel that I want it to be. But look how fast that is. That's so, so fast. It's way faster than when it was just the stock BIOS. The hard drive is also an SSD, so that helps a little bit. But my my goodness, it's so much faster than what it was before. Let's turn this back off again. So the screen that we have right here, you'll notice there's this little thing right here. This is the inverter board, Ugh. inverter board. And you need this to be able to translate whatever's happening here onto the motherboard. This is the one that came with the stock screen. I'm actually using a different inverter board. Um, there's, on the Libreboot website, they list a bunch of different inverter boards for different screens. I just went with the one that's the cheapest. I also looked up the LED mod for the T60 to figure out which one would work best. And the cheapest one ended up being the one that worked best. So I recommend you go check it out. I can't remember the name of it. I'll probably put it in the description, but I definitely recommend that you get a different screen because the stock screen is really trash. That that 10, I forgot the resolution. I think it's like 1024 by 780. It's garbage. It's really, really awful. Those things tend to be really old. They look awful. You can barely read anything. They don't show up bright in any room. It sucks. But if you're interested in installing Libreboot on any T60, I recommend you go with the 14-inch models because I believe all of the screens on the 14-inch model are supported compared to the 15-inch model, which only two of them are supported, and they're both the IPS. If you do decide to settle with the 15-inch model, which I understand, the 15-inch model is really, really beautiful. It's gorgeous. It looks so pretty. Then I recommend you go with the 1440 by... I forgot that resolution because that's the one that's going to be not only cheaper, it's going to give you pretty much the same thing that you're looking for, just a nicer screen. It's also IPS, so that helps out a lot. I love this computer. It's amazing. It's it's really fantastic. If you're curious about any of the things about this computer, I'd be happy to make 
a whole bunch more videos about it. I, I love using it. My desktop environment is not completely set up at the moment. I'm trying to, I'm testing out a bunch of other different things. I have Openbox installed. I might try out i3 or Sway, depending on how I'm feeling. I'm testing out a bunch of different things. So it's not, it's not in the state that I want it to be yet, but it's amazing. It's also using the, it's also using an Athros Wi-Fi card, which is like right around here in this area. The Athros Wi-Fi card has drivers that are included within the kernel already. So it just works right out of the box. Nothing, nothing necessary. So you really do get a completely Libra experience. For general use though, I think something like a T400 or an X200 would probably be a little bit better. Up until they Libra boot the T61, then you can maybe consider this just because it is a bit limiting to only be able to use three gigabyte, three gigabytes of RAM. But I personally make use of it. It's really all that I need. Eight gigabytes would be nice, but I don't necessarily need more than three. I can make do with that. Firefox works well. Emacs works well. Dual core is pretty much enough for what I need to do. I don't really, my my more modern laptop has dual core with uh, hyper threading in. This, is, this can pretty much accomplish the same things that that computer can do. Maybe a little bit slower, but it's enough. It's great. It's a great computer, but that's pretty much all I, all I need to say. Again, if anybody is curious about this computer and wants to see a few more videos about it, I'll, I'll definitely make them. But for now, that's, that's all I'm going to be talking about.